Hello, my dear friends all over the world. This is Maxine Taylor, and I have in front of me scattered about on lots of different papers, um, the United States forecast for the month of November, 2023. Uh, before I jump in, because I've got a lot to share with you, uh, I just want to mention something because several of you have been in touch with me and asked me when I'm going to start another series of astrology courses, um, meaning there are different classes. We meet once a week and those classes form a beginning course, an intermediate course, and an advanced course in astrology. Um, and it flows very, very naturally. I'm going to begin a whole new series in January. The next question I get is, uh, and this is for the person who doesn't want to be involved in a group situation online, okay? By the way, all the information that you'll need is on my website, MaxineTaylor.com. Um, a lot of people don't want to sit in a classroom, so to speak, even if it's virtual, um, and they want more. Per they want one-on-one -on -one attention with me. Okay, I have already um, revved up my mentoring program. I was mentoring uh, actively pre-COVID, and we all know what COVID did to everything on this planet. Um, and so I've uh, resurrected my mentoring program. And if you're interested in that, face-to-face, one-on-one, -on -one, and in all of my astrology classes, your textbook is your birth chart and the birth charts of your friends and relatives. It, it it is a fabulous way to learn more about yourself and to learn astrology at the same time. Okay, now what I want to do is, what I want to do is find all my paperwork and get it accurate, accurately placed so that I can let it flow. And here we go. Looks like, looks like we've got a home run here. Okay, the United States chart um, is, of course, it's not a, a human being's birth chart, but it is the chart of our nation. And so the um, interpretation of the different houses, the different uh, areas of life in a mundane chart and a country's chart is a mundane chart, are different than a personal chart, your own natal chart, for example. So uh, some of you I know are advanced astrology students and advanced astrologers. I'm going to still, if, if that's okay, explain each house that is activated so that those people who uh, don't know a great deal of astrology will feel comfortable and included. I think the worst thing is to feel excluded and everybody's nodding their heads in agreement. And you're saying, what? What am I missing? Uh, so anyhow, that's that's the way I do it. That's the way I, uh, that's the way I run. And uh, those of you who are advanced I hope that I can give you um, a piece of information that completes your puzzle. Because if you're an advanced student, you've been watching the United States chart and Trump's chart and all that stuff. Um, all right. So, first of all, I've got it down to three three sheets of paper that's a record okay the first piece of paper is the path of the sun in november 
Um, the sun is the giver of life. It's the center of our life. Wherever it is in the chart, whether it's a person's chart, a country's chart, a corporation's chart, it's still the chart. And when the sun is sitting in a particular house, that house comes alive. Now, the sun is going to be, first of all, it'll start off in the sixth house. In a personal uh, birth chart, that's work, health, and service. But, or should I say, and in a mundane chart, and I'm going to read this because I don't want to leave anything out. Uh, in a, a mundane chart, a country's chart, the sixth house rules the military. It does rule our health. It rules our jobs. And with the sun in the sixth house, work improves, jobs increase, etc. cetera. Uh, this is really um, a very good sign. Uh, the sixth house is civil servants of all kinds, pets, food. I mean, you, you hear what's activated, animals of all types, and the police and fire departments. Now, these are also, the sixth house also deals with jobs for everybody. And we know that the, there have been several um, organizations that have been striking. Um, I, and, the, and that has been changing, thank goodness. But it's still the sixth house of everything I just read can be healed more beautifully this coming month, November. Today is the 1st of November. Um, with the sun in that sixth house, it brings to life everything that that beautiful sixth house rules. And that is why everything is moving along really nicely. Now, Mercury is going to go into the shadow of the retrograde. And um, naturally, I don't have that particular paper. Uh, but it goes retrograde this month, November. And so I'm going to give you those dates. So sorry, it moves into the shadow in November. It goes retrograde December 13th, and it goes direct in January 2024. So we're going to be in the shadow of the retrograde um, at the end of November and on through December. Now, some of you are very sensitive to uh, pl the planets. You feel the shadow You way before it happens. You feel it. You feel the retrograde before it happens. So I, when I, I've decided when I'm looking at the retrograde and the shadow of the retrograde, I'm going to keep it without a, a, a distinct line of demarcation, okay? Because it's only when it's retrograde that we feel it like that. How? On a... During those times that Mercury is in the shadow of the retrograde, it feels exactly like Mercury is retrograde. It's not, but it feels as if it is. So it's difficult to start new projects. Don't start a new project. Instead, tie up the loose ends of unfinished projects. Now, what I just said for you and me and everybody out there, that's what's going to be going on in the United States, all right? And so here we've got the sun in our sixth house, helping the workers, helping our health, um, our food supply, everything that I, I talked about. 
on the 29th of the month, the sun sheds its light on the seventh house because it moves into the seventh house in the United States chart. I'm going to share with you all the information. Um, in a person's chart, it deals with a one-on-one -on -one relationship. It's open enemies. Uh, you know who your enemies are. It deals with one-on-one -on -one partnerships. In a mundane chart, it deals with international affairs, wars, lawsuits, the law itself. People have been trying to change the law. Um, our open enemies, lawyers, politics, marriage and divorce, the lower courts, and contracts of all of all types, as well as the public. And so on the 29th, we should we should have resolved a great deal uh, that de uh, from the sixth house of working and the workers and um, everything that I read off. There's, I noticed that the sixth house deals with our pets and animals in general. Um, and I've seen situations on the news that talk about animals looking for food. Um, they too, of course, I guess, have been hit by everything. Um, so once again, on the 29th, open enemies, things are out in the open, and that will be what we'll focus on in December. Okay, now, we have a new moon and a full moon. The new moon, and that's when the energy starts moving forward. The new moon is November 13th, and it is in 21 degrees of Scorpio. So, on the 13th, there is energy that starts flowing in the United States sixth house. I guess what I'm really uh, emphasizing here is don't be expecting a change tomorrow. But the new moon on the 13th should shed a light because the sun is the, the um, giver of light. It's the center of our world. And that deals with jobs, uh, people who are on strike, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then two weeks later, we have a full moon. The full moon is in our 12th house in the United States chart. Now, in a personal chart, the 12th house is the spirit plane. It is behind the scenes activities. Well, it is behind the scenes activities in a mundane chart. <clears throat> However, on the full moon, it the full the full moon acts like a violin string. You turn it and you turn it and you turn it, and one turn too much and it explodes, it tears, it tears up. The full moon is on November 27th in five degrees of Gemini. The United States ascendant is seven plus of Gemini. And Uranus, the rebel, the one that is the great awakener, the one that starts rebellions, is triggered, all of that. And so it looks like once again, there are going to be um, open 
rebellion on the part of the people. Now, this is not something new to us. Excuse me, allergies. This is not new to us. But whenever that ascendant is hit, Uranus is hit, and that's rebellion. The first house in a mundane chart deals with the attitude of the people. Well, they're going to be in rebellion. The political mood of the people. Well, our political mood has been crazy. Uh, it's the only word I can use to describe it. And public health. But because this full moon is in the 12th house, it originates in the 12th house. I'm going to read you the definition of the 12th house in a mundane chart. <clears throat> Bribery, spies, hidden enemies, prison, jail, hospitals, crime and criminals, uh, charitable institutions, seclusion, secret societies, those who were downtrodden and welfare. In other words, the rebellion is going to stem. It will start with our hidden enemies propelling the rebellion and it will take, take shape. Uh, back a couple of years ago when Mars was crossing the United States ascendant, I, I didn't go into detail uh, because I didn't want to pour gasoline on the, you know, on the flames. Um, this is a little bit different. It's not Mars. It is the full moon, which means it will be short-lived, which is a good thing. But because it originates behind the scenes, not out front, um, it has a much more, a much more hidden, perhaps sinister note, because it is hidden, and it is our hidden enemies. The seventh house deals with our open enemies. Um, so that's what we got going. All right. Now. I want to talk about Mercury, the planet Mercury, that is going to be moving into the shadow at the end of the month, the shadow of the retrograde. It has been and is in the sixth house right now. Now, Mercury is not an action planet. It's a communicating planet. And actually, uh, Mercury is what we think about and talk about. It's in the sixth house of civil servants, our health, the military, um, animals, uh, police, fire, health, jobs, all the stuff I talked about before. Lots of talk. So this can be negotiating um in any scenario where people are on strike, it's not going to act on it. It's going to talk about it. On the 15th, Mercury moves into that seventh house. And uh, lots of talking, lots of communicating. And remember, these are our open enemies. Our hidden enemies are the 12th house. And the 12th house also deals with prisons. And so there can be deals made. You know what I'm saying? All right. So Mercury goes into the seventh house 
lots of negotiation, lots of talking, lots of communicating. Mars, the planet of war. Mars is number one. Wherever it is, it's number one. It's in our sixth house of, I'm going to read it again. So you, the military, health, jobs, civil servants, our pets, our food, animals, police and fire departments. And Mars brings anger to the table. Mars says, this is what I want and I want it now. And so that can be the mood of the workers. Well, it will be the mood of the workers and it will tie in with the full moon on the ascendant. Now, what else did I want to talk about here? Oh, Jupiter. Jupiter is the greater benefic. Uh, before I do Jupiter, I want to do Venus. I'm coming back to Jupiter. Venus is love and beauty and money and everything artistic. And it's going through our fifth house. The fifth house deals with children. There have been so many uh, wonderful as well as egregious news stories involving children. Children from not just the United States, but children in general. Uh, it's the most horrible thought. Uh, I don't even want to go there. However, I want to share with you that Venus is the lesser benefic. Jupiter, which I'm going to get to in a minute, is the greater benefic. These are the two good guys of the zodiac. Okay. Venus, today is November 1st. Venus is sitting on Neptune. When Venus and Neptune get together, it, it's a, a very loving situation. And so there can be money and gifts uh, of love that we spend on our children. By the way, our pets are not, our pets are traditionally in a mundane chart, the sixth house. But I know how I feel about animals and I know how my friends feel about their pets. So this child can be pets, of course. Now I want to read the mundane definition of the fifth house. Children, fun. I can't read my own handwriting. Oh, sports, uh, gambling, theaters the birth rate, uh, public hearings, congressional hearings, stadiums, and teachers. And so it, it really is an interesting mundane interpretation. So here's Venus sitting on Neptune saying, bring love, bring joy, bring friendship and so today i hope that's what you experienced i know there's crazy stuff going on in the news but um, venus just smooths everything over it um helps diffuse volatile situations that's today now on the 21st venus sits on very serious Saturn. Um, Saturn traditionally rules fear and restriction. Uh, that is incredibly negative, but I find that the old time interpretation of uh, the planets is accurate simply because uh, in a country, there are so many thousands in small countries 
and millions in large companies, uh, countries, excuse me, in large countries. And so it takes on a much more serious tone. Saturn can cause restrictions when it comes to fun, when it comes to gambling, um, and when it comes to congressional and public hearings, okay? Venus softens things. So <laughs> this we want Venus to stick around a while. However, on the 29th, it moves into the sixth house. And those strikes that we have been experiencing, the workers' situations, the health of the people, um, police and firemen, our jobs. Venus is going to say, it's okay. I'm smoothing things over. Okay, now, Jupiter, the greater benefic. Venus is the lesser benefic. Jupiter is the greater benefic. Jupiter is abundance. Wherever it is in somebody's chart, it brings a lot of. Jupiter is truth. I like it in the 12th house, but it's truth for, it's truth behind the scenes. Every country has its secrets that they dare not share um, because it's our own, every country wants the security that uh, privacy provides, uh, lack of knowledge. I think it's very safe to say that every country has its own spy system. Jupiter what is retrograde, which means it's not functioning fully. It will go direct the last day of the year of 2023, of course. Um, and after that, all the behind the scenes activities, um, the civil servants from the sixth house, our hidden enemies, spies, criminals, jail, institutions, um, welfare, secret societies. They're not secret when people call them by name. We start off the year with Jupiter in direct motion which is going to be, I think, really positive because it's in its own natural house here in the 12th house. So I hope I've been clear and I hope that you understand what I've said and what I haven't said, what I've alluded to. Um, I, I'm I'm very happy that Jupiter is getting ready to go direct at the end of the year. When Jupiter crosses the United States ascendant, it is going to, and it won't be tomorrow, don't worry. Um, it's going to sit on Uranus, the rebel, explosiveness. You might say, well, I, Max, I thought you said that Jupiter was the good guy. Yeah, it is. But it expands uh, anything it touches. So if it touches a volatile planet, there's going to be a lot of volatility. But I will keep you posted on that. When the time comes, I'll let you know exactly when it is. So... My dear friends, that's it for November. Join me next month when once again, I take a look at the United States chart. And if uh, 
I want I want to mention something uh, that some of my clients are doing, and if this feels good to you, I I hope you'll contact me. Now is a very good time to learn what your personal mission on this planet is. And I can help you do that very simply and very quickly. If you're interested, go to my website, MaxineTaylor.com and go to the Spiritual Services tab. Say it fast three times. Um, and sign up for a one-on-one -on -one session face-to-face -face with me. It won't take long. And I will help you get your life's mission. And I want to tell you, you're already doing it. You simply may not be consciously aware of it. So I'll help you become consciously aware of it. And it will fit you like a glove. You will recognize it and you will cherish it. And so till next time, all my friends, may the stars shine brightly on you and yours. Bye for now.